Hello and welcome to another installment of Metalhead Central, the show where I take an honest look at the harder side of music and give it an honest rating. Sorry for the delay on this video, but work's been kind of crazy this week, but that's irrelevant. Let's get into things here for today. We're going to be heading to the land where everything is melodic and extremely bombastic, sometimes to its benefit and sometimes to its detriment. Yes, we're going to be taking a look at symphonic slash power slash neoclassical metal outfit and Barry and Dawn and their new album Looking For You. It was released January 31st on Napalm Records. This is the band's first effort in three years. So how'd they do? Let's find out, shall we? The album's first part is an interesting exercise in catchy musicality. Journey-esque keyboard work lays the groundwork for every single song and the drums and guitars really take a backseat to everything else. This album is not for the extreme metalhead. I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead and be up front and tell you that right now. If you're into death or black metal, you're probably not going to enjoy this one. But as far as the music is concerned, this album had some good stuff to offer. It was catchy and sounds like a retrospective look back at a time when synthesizers, flashy dresses, and bright lights ruled the world of mainstream rock and metal. It truly feels like something that Foreigner, or again, Journey, would have put out back in 1983, only with more polished production because, well, it's 2020 and we can do that now. That's not a knock against the album, and I'm a huge fan of the homage paid to the past here. It also sounds like Mannheim Steamroller, the metal album. The Christmas Giants are well known for their thickly laid keys, and Embarian Dawn copies that formula to a T on this album. You know, sometimes I didn't know whether or not I was listening to one or the other. It was an interesting mixture of metal, something like new wave, and old 80s pop music, combined with the wonderful vocal performance of, and I hope I get this right, Paivi Virkunen, otherwise known as Capri, who leads the band through this very straightforward, very clean set of songs. The problem with this album lies in its own interchangeability throughout the second part. As cliche as it is for a critic to use the following phrase, it rings true with this album. All the songs sound exactly the same. The drumming doesn't vary much from your standard four-on-the-floor hi-hat assisted pattern, and the guitar and bass take supporting rather than leading roles. As much as the songs on here were rather nicely written, and I appreciate the band's attempts to throw serenity into a genre well-known for chaotic madness, it would do them good to pump some of the other instruments up in the mix. I'm going to give this album an 85 out of 100. It's got some really catchy tunes and some enjoyable parts, but as a whole album, it falls short of where it could be. Now, full disclosure, I haven't heard a ton from this band, so maybe my expectations were a little bit high. But as an album from a symphonic or power metal band, I expected a lot more, well, power. As such, it's fine for what it is. It could simply be better. Thank you so much for watching. Click like and please subscribe. We're trying to get this channel up. Next week, one of the biggest metal acts in the history of the genre is dropping a new album. Sepultura will be putting out Quadra, and I'll be here to review it. I hope you join me. You've been watching Metalhead Central, where I give honest ratings to honest music, and I'll see you all next time.